डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू द वीडियो लेक्चर नंबर सेवन ऑफ मॉडल नंबर फोर वाटर केमिस्ट्री मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ योर सिलेबस इज दैट इज वाटर एनालिसिस एज यू नो दैट वाटर कंटेन्स मेनी डिजॉल्व कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ साल्स इन वाटर एज वी डिस्कस द इम्प्रूटीज इन वाटर बिकॉज ऑफ मोर अमाउंट ऑफ सॉलिबिलिटी so water gets different properties hence the sum of the salts which are essential for the growth of the human being and sum of the salts which are causing the harmful effect to the human beings let us discuss one of the component that is fluoride if it is present in the water is it safe for human being let us discuss about what are the harmful effects which are including includes due to the presence of fluoride in in water the harmful effects includes which are caused by the consumption of fluoride containing water are as follows dental fluorosis skeletal fluorosis cancer bone fractures neurological impairment it means lowering of your iq that is intelligence quotient quotient as you know that fluoride is present in most of the natural water resources the concentration may vary from 0.05 to 100 mg per liter but most of the water resources commonly they contains less than 0.1 mg per liter in all water resources bodies some ground waters are having very high concentration of fluoride content for to give particular examples in our country the states like andhra pradesh and tamil nadu the concentration of fluoride can reach up to 10 mg per liter fluoride is beneficial and toxic to the human being at lower concentration which prevents the dental caries that is what teeth decay if it is less than 1 mg per liter but at very high concentration that is 4 mg per liter it causes skeletal fluorosis it means the intermediate concentration between 1 mg per liter to 4 mg per liter it causes the <coughs> the dental related diseases that is called dental fluorosis as per the indian standard of prescribes the limit for fluoride for most of the waters it is fixed up to 1.5 mg per liter and consumption of fluoride content more than this 1.5 mg per liter it is not safe for the human being hence friends we should have the awareness about the fluoride content in the water sample so water it may contain the fluoride so it will cause the damage to the the teeth okay now in this slide what i explain if it is less than 0.5 mg per liter it causes dental caries that is starts teeth decay it means the loss of teeth 0.5 to 1.5 promotes the dental health it is good for the human being but less than 0.5 mg per liter it causes the dental caries what that's what teeth decay therefore the range of fluoride content must be present that is 0.5 to 1.5 which promotes the dental health but friends more than 1.5 to 4 mg per liter it causes the disease is called the dental fluorosis if it is greater than 4 ppm or mg per liter definitely it causes the skeletal fluorosis so you can observe here about the 
the fluorosis disease how it causes the dental fluorosis where the acute photos of uh, animal uh, enamel of uh, dental teeth how it gets degraded by the fluoride consumption you observe here this is a normal teeth somewhat questionable we cannot be predict the uh, teeth is good or not very mild coating what can observe there is what the coating starts about the brownish and dear friends you can see that mild moderate and severe coating what you can see here that is what the mottling of teeth that means there is a brown stain coating what you can observe on the teeth part that is called the dental fluorosis so here you can observe the dental teeth decay that is because of not consuming the fluoride water from 0.5 to 1.5 mg per liter that may lead to problems also that is what i have explained to you the presence of fluoride is benefit as well as toxic to the human being if it is more than 1.5 u and up to 4 mg per liter definitely it causes the the dental fluorosis that is called the brown stain or that's what you can say mottling of the teeth what can observe that is beautifully shown in this slant so this is you can see in this picture i have shown because of higher concentration of fluoride more than 4 mg per liter the peoples are going to suffer from the skeletal fluorosis because of that the, there is a stiffness is observed in the leg portion there what the movement of the leg it is what uh, not possible freely because of what decay of the calcium component into the bone marrow so even though consuming the water with higher concentration of fluoride by small kids also are affected by the the fluorosis in certain states as i explained you now fluorosis means what fluorosis is a disease caused by the deposition of fluoride in the hard and soft tissues of the body excessive fluoride amounts in drinking water on exposing higher concentration it causes skeletal fluorosis and milder exposure concentration causes the dental fluorosis according to the report released by the world health organization that is what who primarily as i told you that the water it contains what some amount of the fluoride content but when the fluoride amount which increases more than 1.5 mg per liter that becomes very toxic to the human being hence uh, let us discuss about some of the fluoride compounds are involved in the production of some of the components in the industries so some of the fluoride compounds are used for the production of aluminium steel uranium cement enamel plastics etc hence monitoring and maintaining optimum fluoride levels is essential to maintain the effectiveness and safety of the health by the fluoridation process so where do you get the fluoride content in our nature as you know that symbolically fluoride is represented as f and uh, fluoride is found in the form of only two minerals under the ground the one is the fluorospar that is af2 under one is cryolite that is na3alf6 so this is what about the the fluoride present in the some important minerals which are often from the earth crust so other apart from this 
so what are the sources are able to expose the human body for the fluoride dear friends what are using the toothpaste which is enhanced with the fluoride and uh, fluorinated water supply because of consuming fluorinated water supply and some of the mouth washes what are using they are also containing fluoride and some of the food processed are also with fluorinated water and fluoride supplements etc are the sources for the consumption of fluoride into the human body let us discuss about specifically here we are able to get the food like fish meat egg as you know that consuming fluorinated water and also the tea leaves also there what containing the fluoride in some content apart from this what we use mouthwash the toothpaste and some gel supplements and some treatments are also done to the teeth by the dentist are also some of the sources for exposing the fluoride for the human beings so here there is one general suggestion is there for the children they should use very small quantity of the toothpaste for the cleaning of teeth after from this not taking the much more otherwise it will causes the dental fluorosis for the kids so now sources of fluoride for human exposure what are the sources where fluoride is consuming by the human beings first one is water food air is also containing and some medicament like some of the liquid medicines are also containing fluoride and the cosmetics that what we are using they are also containing the fluoride content now this is what about the about where do you get the fluoride and the effects of fluoride for the human being and we clearly discuss about that we have the harmful effects like dental fluorosis skeletal fluorosis bone related diseases like bone fractures cancer etc so as a result we should know that whether your water contains fluoride in optimized range as per the prescribed by the world health organization hence so we have to follow this technical analysis that is by using the some important chemical reagents in chemistry lab so what are the reagents are used for the analysis of fluoride we need sodium fluoride we need concentrated hydrochloric acid we need spadns reagent we need zirconyl chloride octahydrate and also we need the solution are to be prepared by using the distilled water so this is what the structure of the spadns reagent here s stands for the sulfo this is what the sulfo group p stands for the phenyl a stands for the azo group what you can see then d stands for the dihydroxy you can observe here dihydroxy and naphthalene group what can observe naphthalene and y stands for sodium sulfonate sodium sulfonate dear friends how to prepare the some chemical reagents before to proceed for the chemical analysis in the chemistry lab we need the following chemicals for to be prepared before to go for the fluoride analysis the first one is spadns reagent it is prepared by taking 1.916 g of spadns salt and is dissolved in 1000 ml of distilled water and second chemical is required for us zirconyl acid reagent what we need it is prepared by taking 
by dissolving 133 mg of zirconyl octachloride in 25 ml of distilled water and adding 350 ml of concentrated hydrochloric acid and diluting all together with distilled water making it to the dilution of to 500 ml in the volumetric glass then we need to prepare some standard sodium fluoride solution by taking the salt 0.2210 gram of unhydrated sodium fluoride <coughs> prepared in distilled water in 1000 ml volumetric flask and this concentration what you get it its concentration is what 100 ppm this is what named as the stock sodium fluoride solution by using this stock sodium fluoride solution we can prepare the standard fluoride work solutions for your experiment to prepare the work solution you have to take 10 ml of the stock solution in 100 ml volumetric flask and dilute it to 100 ml with distilled water the concentration is reduced to 100 to 10 ppm it means we have to prepare the standard solutions ranging from we can prepare from 0 to 10 ppm that's what and fifth chemical agent what we need acid zirconyl aspartic reagent what is required <coughs> this is prepared by taking chemical 1 and chemical 2 mixing equal volume you are going to get a red zirconium dye that is in red color that is a combination of equal volume of both chemical 1 and chemical 2 mixing in equal proportions 1 is to 1 then point number 6 we need sodium arsenate solution the purpose of using this is what we need to prepare 5 g of sodium arsenate and it is diluted to 1 liter in distilled water this is purpose is used to prevent the bleaching against by the chloride ions if your water contains fluoride sorry chloride in water otherwise it will also interfere in fluoride analysis so dear students what you can observe here the principle what is used for the analysis of fluoride estimation that is what the determination of fluoride in water sample by using zirconium spdns reagent method or it is also called as colorimetric method the principle follows like this in this segment a water containing fluoride ion that is what the colorless water is made to react with the zirconyl spdns reagent it is in red color the fluoride ions forms the complex with zirconyl oxide and there is a formation of zirconium hexafluoride leaving behind a free spdns reagent in the reaction that is what in yellow color as a result there is a decrease in the red color <coughs> as the concentration of fluoride increases so this process what can say is called bleaching action bleaching means changing the color from one color to other color so this is how it is taking place let us see here the first one the fluoride concentration if it is increases there is decrease in the concentration of red color mean there is a decrease in the concentration of red color if the fluoride concentration increases there is increase in the yellow color so means what the decrease in red color and increase in yellow color so by using this spdns reagent In the analysis. So for this SPDNS reagent, we have to select the filter 574 nanometer by using the colorimeter or spectrophotometer for to estimate fluoride ion in water sample by using Beer-Lambert's law. About the Beer-Lambert's law concept, we'll discuss in the next module about instrumental analysis. now let us discuss about the theory part of this experiment is what the colorimetric method of spdns reagent 
which is taking place the reaction between the colorless fluoride water with the zirconium dye spinous reagent that is the red lake so fluoride reacts with the dye lake dissociating a proportion of a colorless complex that is zirconium hexafluoride and the separation of that is what is paired in is done as the amount of fluoride increases the color produced becomes progressively lighter of red color dye there is a progressive increase in the yellow color of the spadinus reagent the reaction between fluoride and zirconium ions are influenced greatly by the acidic acidity of the reaction mixture so in this what can clearly explain about the how the uh, chemical process or chemical reaction is taking place in the colorimetric estimation of fluoride by using the zirconium spadinus reagent friends we are using here what zirconium ox oxy uh, oxychloride when it is made to react with your spadinus reagent leading to form the red color dye that is what a zirconil spadinus reagent so this zirconil spadinus reagent when it is reacting with your fluoride water containing water that is what 6f minus leading to form separation of spadinus dye that is what yellow color solution with colorless zirconium hexafluoride and the water so before to proceed you have to prepare the standard solutions by taking 100 ml volumetric flask and the flasks are numbered as 1 to 12 numbers i mean to say you have to take 12 numbers of volumetric flask of 100 ml capacity and naming them one number two up to 12 numbers as explained in the table column and in second column what i mentioned here sodium fluoride in terms of ppm in first flask there should not be added any sodium fluoride solution of standard this was the blank solution second flask 0.5 ppm 1 ppm 1.5 ppm and so on we can increase up to 5 ppm what expand in this table column and in 12th class what are taken the test water sample what you are interested to determine the fluoride in the water sample after this for all the 12 flask we have to add sodium arsenate solution the purpose of adding sodium arsenate solution to prevent the uh, interference of fluoride in the fluoride analysis so this is how you have to add one drop of sodium arsenate to prevent the interference of fluoride chloride in the fluoride analysis then in all tol flask we need to add 10 ml zirconil spadinus lake that is red color g reagent for all the tol flask then remaining volume is diluted with the distilled water making total volume 100 ml for each flask then afterwards by using the colorimeter or spectrophotometer we have to measure the absorbance or optical density of the solution by using the filter that is called 472 nanometer sorry it is 574 nanometer so in this clear uh, table column i have clearly explained about the plus once again to numbers in the examination you can write this table column but for understanding purpose i have explained this column table column separately once again what you can observe serial numbers first column up to to numbers labeling sodium chloride in ppm blank solution then up to 12 plus 0.51 1.52 2.5 2 and so on up to 11 plus up to 5 ppm then 12 plus is taken as test solution 
then all the flasks we need to add one drop of sodium arsenate then for all the 12 flasks we need to add 10 ml zirconia spadine as reagent then remaining volume is diluted with the additional water so as the concentration of fluoride is increases progressively <coughs> the color of zirconial espadine is going to diminishes and uh, there is a formation of zirconium hexafluoride and intensity of espadine reagent is increases progressively that is what you can observe in this reaction Dear students, here I have shown the blank solution without fluoride, then 0.52 out to 5 ppm. The last class case, it is what? Test water. Then when it is made to react with fluoride ion, the color of the dye is going to change because of reaction as explained there is a formation of yellow color so here yellow color intensity is what that is going to be increases as the fluoride concentration increases so let us begin now about the procedure how to follow this technique the first step prepare series of standard fluoride solutions in the range of 0 0.0 to 5 milligram per liter or ppm for to plot the calibration curve second point add one drop of sodium arsenate solution of 0.5 percent to remove the residual chlorine to each of the standard plus to prevent in the analysis interference of chloride in the analysis then for each plus we need to add 10 ml of zirconial SPDNS reagent and dilute with distilled water up to 100 ml by using the volumetric flask. And fix the wavelength of the filter in a colorimeter that is 574 nanometer and then follow the procedure for taking the readings. And prepare the blank solution by adding 10 ml of zirconia spadine reagent without adding sodium fluoride solution in 100 ml standard flask. Then adding hydrochloric acid 7 ml diluted to 10 ml with 7 ml of concentrated cell diluted to 10 ml and make up to the mark. Take this one as the blank solution in the covet or the sample holder to set the absorbance to zero the purpose is to nullify the absorbance caused by the fluoride ion from any other source then point number six measure the absorbance of all the solutions of standard solutions in the same way i note down the values in the respective solution rows then seven point take suitable water sample in test solution add one drop of sodium arsenate solution 0.5 percent to remove the any interface of chloride add 10 ml zirconium spinous reagent then dilute it with the dish water up to 100 ml at the end measure the absorbance of this test water sample also then plot the graph of absorbance or optical density is taken along y scale versus fluoride concentration is taken along the x scale then tenth point find the fluoride concentration corresponding to the test solution by floating the graph then finally you have to write the report the fluoride ion in the given sample is equal to dash ppm from the graph so this is how you have to plot the graph here optical density of test uh, Standard solutions is taken along the y scale, whereas concentration in terms of ppm is taken along the x scale. So here, as the concentration increases of the fluoride, optical density is also increases. You are getting the the set of the points. The force in the straight line passes through the origin. 
This is what the verification of Beer Lambert's law. Then how to calculate this one? Calculation follows fluoride in terms of milligram per liter. You should know that OD of the sample of water into standard take standard concentration of one of the solution that is divided by OD of the standard divided by volume of sample taken in that multiplied by thousand you are able to get the concentration of fluoride in the test sample so this is what about the estimation of fluoride in water sample by zirconyl spadiness reagent method thank you one and all